Jack from Peach Guitars here and welcome to a bit of an Eric Clapton special. Today I'm going to walk through a couple of signature Eric Clapton rigs that I've managed to piece together from some very impressive stock that we've currently got here in the shop. But before I do so, before I get into today's video, I just want to remind you to please like this, comment down below with your thoughts, let me know which of the two rigs I'm going to show you today is your personal favourite and also make sure that you're subscribed to the Peach Guitars YouTube channel. <coughs> So as you'll be able to tell by my intro and indeed the title of this video and the gear that I'm holding, today I'm going to break down a couple of really iconic Eric Clapton rigs. Most specifically I'm going to focus on this kind of Strat and Soldano era which he was famous for in the late 80s to the mid 90s, that kind of time period. We're also going to focus on his late 60s uh, Gibson guitar with a Marshall style amp set up as well. I just want to show you really the kind of general ethos of what these guitar rigs represent. I'm not today going to try and as accurately as I possibly can recreate his tones. Uh, I think that's nigh on impossible. I'm sure there's a lot of people out there on the internet that will argue for days over the intricacies of each setup, where the settings are on the amps and all that kind of stuff. Today isn't about that, uh, so save your comments below. Really what I'm trying to go for is just to get a general vibe of what each setup had going for it and to also kind of show you how I suppose this, the gear informs his playing a little bit as well. I'll kind of give a couple of my thoughts on that. The differences between the two rigs. So the one I'm holding, uh, I wanted to take advantage of this guitar today. The fact that we've got this now, this is a Todd Krauss master-built Fender Custom Shop Eric Clapton Signature Strat. Something we don't see too often, they're very hard to come by in fact, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to actually plug this in to the Soldano SLO 100, as I said he famously did in the 90s. And this proved, uh, it's kind of opened up a world of thought as to where else did Clapton's tone go, or indeed where did it evolve from to get to this point. So I'm also going to show you, as I say, the Gibson into a Marshall style amp setup as well. And in that segment I'm going to talk a little bit about my personal feeling about setting up the Les Paul to get those kind of tones with the controls on the guitar. Very, very minimal setup. However, this Stratton Soldano setup is a little bit more involved, so I'm going to break down each element of the chain as I go. Okay, so I want to treat this video fairly chronologically, so I'm going to start with the Les Paul. I think the tone I'm going to show you first with the Gibson is a little bit more of what I would typically associate with Clapton. I'm sure it's what most guitar players think of. He's a great, great example of that cranked Les Paul into a martial tone, very much that Brit-inspired tone as well. So it's a totally unique thing, really testament to Clapton's uh, playing style at the time. And I wanted to just try and, as I say, replicate that kind of a vibe. So I'm not going for the exact tones that you'll hear on record or in live situations, but hopefully you'll get an understanding of what I felt Clapton was going for in those days and also what it puts me in mind of when I pick up that setup. <laughs> Okay, so I want to kick things off with Era 1, if you like. So of the two setups I'm going to show you today, this is probably, I would say, the most synonymous Clapton setup that we get asked about a lot and that most people refer to when they're playing a Clapton-style tone. It's usually when they're going for the late 60s to very early 70s, I suppose you could say, with, with the cream kind of setup that Clapton had of the Gibson into a Marshall-style amp. It's not the easiest thing in the world to replicate, Though actually you'll be surprised um, when you do plug a Gibson into a Marshall, you're kind of in the vein. There's a lot of speculation about trickery that you might have had, whether it was using a treble booster on the Beano album or anything like that. Which, to my, to my ears, you get sounding close enough just plugging straight into a Marshall style amp. You don't need any of that stuff. I'm sure he didn't use any of that, lest I open up any internet speculation in the comments below. Like I said in the intro though, in this video today I'm not trying to nail particular Clapton tones. I'm not trying to get things to a T. There are other people on the internet that can do that, I'm sure, a lot better than I can. What I wanted to do by plugging this 60th anniversary 1960 Les Paul into a Dr. Z Remedy, which is a plexi style amp, with an exotic wild pedal on the floor, I just wanted to try and capture the essence of that late 60s Clapton sound, which, as I said, is not always the easiest thing to achieve. There's certain little tricks on the guitar that you can do, and just by using 
techniques with your hands and that's really I think where the crux of the sounds. So for example in the clip you're going to hear with this guitar I'm really working the volume controls a lot and I've noticed that to my ear at least to get the most authentic cream era Clapton sounds you're best off actually usually in the middle pickup position on a Les Paul and just by varying the neck volume you still have a lot of the bridge pickup tone but you blend in a little bit of the fatness from the neck pickup and that's what gives it that nice round smoothness. It's not always about just the bridge pickup by itself though of course you can do that for that extra stingy top end and then famously it's coupled with the polar opposite which in this case I'm using the neck pickup to dump the tone completely to zero and go for that woman tone. So there's two extremes there you've got the very warm woolly kind of neck pickup woman tone and then you've got the bright stinging Les Paul bridge pickup sound so it's a real interesting diversity of tones as I said there's no other effects or gimmicks at play here today I'm just playing through a wah pedal straight into a remedy that's pretty cranked up uh, you know you do have to play loud for this kind of a tone and that's why it's probably one of the harder things to achieve in terms of famous guitar tones because it's simply about playing a guitar very loud into a Marshall style amplifier but that's what I'm doing here today. I hope you enjoy the results. As I say, I'm not going for any particular Clapton reference or Clapton song or lead or anything like that. I'm just kind of sprinkling a few references throughout what I'm playing. So hopefully you'll find this is the most uh, usable setup for this kind of a tone. Obviously you can use a variety of different Marshall style amplifiers. However, I do feel that the Remedy with 40, 40 watts of power captures the plexi kind of tonality, but makes it a little bit more manageable at different volume levels if you need to turn things down a little bit this amp captures the spirit of that very well and of course the 60th anniversary Les Pauls are the best representations modern representations of what those classic guitars that Clapton would have used back in the day really were <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so now that you've heard the Gibson into the Dr. Z, I hope that you'll take a couple of minutes just to appreciate how much Clapton's rig had evolved by the time he came to this setup. From that very simple setup that I was just playing with, with just a wire pedal on the floor and then guitar straight into an amplifier, by the time you get to this era, and I'm missing out obviously huge chunks of his career throughout the 70s and 80s where he had a variety of different setups, but by the early 90s he'd pretty much settled on using Fender Strats as his primary instrument of choice. I believe that Clapton felt that he could get the most variety of tone out of these instruments, coupled with the mid-boost circuitry that's on this guitar as well. Now, one thing I just want to point out before I break down the rig is that being a Todd Krause master-built guitar, this guitar that I'm playing today, and that you could also purchase for yourself if you spec it so, is exactly the same instrument that Eric will play nowadays. So this is the same master builder that builds all of Eric's instruments, and we're very lucky to be able to stock some of his fine works as well. Okay, so this particular Strat that I'm playing today is finished in a very fetching almond green. Um, I really love the colour of this guitar, I really love the, the way this guitar plays and sounds. And as soon as you start playing it, all of those Eric-isms come out of this instrument. Whether it's using position 2 to get that kind of cleaner early 70s sound that he had, you can still get that with this rig. Obviously it's a little bit more of a high-powered, high-fidelity kind of a tone than the early Tweed era stuff when he started to use strats. But this guitar still does it, and it's coupled with the noiseless pickups, and as I said, that mid-boost as well, so if you do want to push on further and get a wider range of gain tones with also a much lower noise floor, then this guitar will handle that as well. So I'm also playing around with kind of all the different pickup positions in this clip. Uh, you're going to hear a lot of middle pickup, and also a fair bit of neck pickup too. Um, I'm also using the mid-boost, fairly obviously, on the crunch channel of the Soldano, You'll see when I do that just by cranking up what would be the bridge tone control. And that's really, to me, the signature tone of Eric in this era. It's certainly what I gravitate towards when I play this setup. Um, it's a very expressive kind of a lead sound. It's also not quite as high gain as it might have sounded in the context of the band mix. I think a lot of that tone has to do with, as I said about with the Gibson tone as well, just sheer volume, and that contributes to the sustain a lot. It's still quite a clean sound using the crunch channel. I'm going to talk about the amp in a moment. Um, but this particular sound with the mid-boost and that sound, I think, works really well for a lot of Eric's style in that early 90s period, especially when he went kind of went back to the blues era stuff as well in the mid-90s. I'm also going to use the lead channel of the Soldano for a little bit of a higher gain thing. I couldn't particularly put any particular tracks uh, kind of to reference on when Eric would have used this. I'm not as much of a, a Clapton nut as I'm sure some of you watching are to be able to tell me when he used the lead channel, but to my ear it just has a different tone, it's a little bit rounder, it's not quite as raw and classic sounding, and it works equally well with this guitar equipped with the noiseless pickups to give you that real long sustaining, very smooth kind of a sound using the lead channel of the amp. So I guess the point I want to make about this whole setup is that it, the emphasis is on the smoothness of the sound. Clapton remarked when he first heard the Soldano amplifiers in the hands of Mark Knopfler that he wanted that big, round and smooth sound and he, he attributed it to the amplifier that Mark Knopfler was using, ordered a couple of custom models for himself, and that was where it all began. So coupling this guitar with this amp immediately puts you in that kind of place and that state of mind of a very smooth, easy to play kind of a sound, and yet you still have a lot of tonal manipulation using this very versatile guitar. So a couple more quick words on the amp. As I say, I'm using the Soldano SLO 100 amplifier today, 
and I'm using the crunch mode on the normal channel with a gain around the seven marker. Um, fairly kind of standard across the board settings, nothing too extreme here. This was very much a plug and play kind of a thing. I didn't have to tweak this too much to get in the ballpark of the Clapton tones. And then with the lead channel, like I said, I didn't want actually too much disparity and I don't think Clapton went for that between the fairly driven sound of the normal channel and then the high gain sound on the lead channel. They're actually quite similar, it's just a voicing difference. And yes, the lead channel does have a bit more gain that you'll hear when I kick that on, but they're voiced fairly similarly. It's a very linear kind of move from the normal channel to the overdriven channel, so just bear that in mind. In terms of the rest of the stuff in this signal chain, as I said before, it's a little bit more involved. I believe that when Clapton went to this setup, he was really trying to recreate his 80s studio tones in a live environment. And he turned to Pete Cornish for that, had a huge rack built with tons of outboard gear, very, very far away from that late 60s setup I talked about before with just guitar and amp. Um, so to replicate some of those tones, I haven't gone in too heavy with the processing and stuff like that, but I am using in the front end the new Compadre Compressor and Boost from Strymon. I'm just using it for a little bit of studio style compression. It's on all the time in all the clips you're going to hear with this guitar. And then in the effects loop of the Soldano amp, I've got an MXR analog chorus and a Strymon Blue Sky Reverb set for a bit of that hall emulation that Eric was using at the time. Okay, so one more disclaimer. As I say, I'm not going for any particular Clapton era tones. I'm just trying to gauge the vibe that he would have had at the time and what it personally makes me want to play when I played it. So any of the references to songs that you're going to hear throughout the course of this video is entirely incidental. And it's really just a case of what I felt this guitar and amp rig sounded like at any given time when I changed the settings. So hopefully you'll understand, like I say, I'm not going for any particular sound. It's just going to put me in the ballpark at least. <laughs> So there we are, with the two clips that you've heard now of these two entirely different setups, hopefully you'll get a bit of an understanding. Like I said, that what I wanted to put across here was just 
the ethos of Clapton's playing in the different eras. Today though, I just really wanted to get into the mindset of what these rigs kind of contribute to your playing, and hopefully I've put that across. A lot of players still feel that Eric sounded better on Gibson's. I personally think he sounds great on both. I love his Fender tones. Let me know in the comments what you prefer, and indeed, if you want to characterize it to the two rigs I've shown you today, let me know whether you prefer Rig A, the Gibson and the Dr. Z, or Rig B, the Fender and the Soldano. So that's it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it, as always. If you'd leave us a like down below, comment with your thoughts as well. Make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, and if you want any more info on any of the products, you can find it all out at peachguitars.com. So thanks for watching, take care of yourselves, and I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.